Good morning, everyone. It is now 9 o'clock, and I would ask that you please rise and join me in the invocation to be given by Chaplain Ralph Easterwood, a chaplain with our Henry County Police Department, and also the Pastor Emeritus with Glen Haven Baptist Church in McDonough. And then if you will please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Chairman, I do appreciate the opportunity to pray. Y'all have asked me several times, and I count it an honor and a privilege and I want to commend our leadership for still believing in the power of prayer, believing in leading in the leadership of the Holy Spirit, and I appreciate the patri patriotic spirit that we still have in this county and y'all's leadership. I pray for y'all daily, and I praise the Lord for the way that you lead and conduct the business in this county. May we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for another day that you have made. You've said in your word, Lord, this is a day that you've made, and we are to rejoice and be glad in it. And we know the business that will be conducted here today is important business. And we know there'll be folks here today from the county that will be stating what they believe should be done and things that they're asking for. And we know the commissioners will be responding. And in their response, Lord, they'll be responding to the greatest answers that they feel like that they can give at this time. And we pray, Lord, that each and everything that we say will mean what we say, but we won't be mean how we say it. We'll have a good spirit. We'll meet together in love and communication and consideration and compassion. And, Lord, that's the way in Christianity that we get things done. So, Lord, we pray for the leadership of our county and all those involved in leadership here that touches thousands of lives. And, Lord, we're thankful for this county and... We're thankful for each and every person that makes it a better place to live. So, Lord, we would pray that you would just lead, guide, and direct all that is said and done today. And we pray it's in the leadership of the perfect will of the Holy Spirit. And draw us together in one mind and one accord. And let us rejoice in the opportunity of life that we have today and the freedom that we have in this country because of all those that's fought and many have died because we can have this freedom, Lord. And as we have the pledge to our flag, Lord, may we say it from the depths of our soul, Lord. And America is a wonderful place to be, and we believe it's the greatest place on the face of this earth. And that's because of the foundation that was put in this country many years ago, Lord. We're founded on the power of your word, the power of your spirit, the power of your being, Lord, and the power of your presence in each and every one of our lives. So, Lord, lead, guide, and direct in all that is done today, Lord. And we trust it to be in the perfect will that you have on earth as well as in heaven, Lord. And we pray and ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one and the only one that we come to for salvation for it. It's in his name we ask it, in, in, ask it today, and all God's people will say, Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I hear about now call the meeting of the Board of Commissioners to order. We will now um, call for a motion to accept the agenda as published. We got a motion? Second. I had a second. Any discussions, questions, or revisions? All in favor? Any opposed? The agenda is accepted as published. We will now introduce Melissa Robinson Fourth to bring forth um, a proclamation for Constitution Week. Good 
morning, Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. This morning we have a proclamation in honor of Constitution Week, September 17th through the 23rd. Whereas the Constitution of the United States of America, the guardian of our liberties, embodies the principles of limited government in a republic dedicated to rule by law. And whereas September 17th, 2017, marks the 230th anniversary of the framing of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention. And whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition of this magnificent document and its memorable anniversary and to the patriotic celebrations which will commemorate it. And whereas Public Law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September 17th through 23rd as Constitution Week. And whereas we ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals that the framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us through this guardian of our liberties. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the week of September 17th through the 23rd shall be known as Constitution Week here in Henry County, during which time we join with other communities across the nation in recognizing the importance of our Constitution and reaffirming our rights and obligations as citizens of this great nation to protect this founding document. This sixth day of September 2017, signed by Chair June Wood, attested by County Clerk Stephanie Braun, and I believe we have a member of the Andrew McBride chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution here to accept this. So you want us to come down for photos, yes. correct? Okay, thank you. Thank you again in honor of Constitution Week. We will now move into item six regarding our consent agenda. The following agenda items shall be considered on the consent agenda. We have one from the county manager, which is a resolution to approve the 2018 holiday schedule. We have one from our community development block grant res as a resolution authorizing the county manager in addition to the chair of the board of commissioners to execute the NSP P NSP grant documentation on behalf of Henry County, Georgia. Are there any items um, that should be removed from the consent agenda at this time? Hearing none, I will now call for a motion to accept the consent agenda. So moved. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The consent agenda is approved. This ends now the consent agenda, and we'll now move into our several items from our purchasing department, and we'll again um, just invite Mr. Rock Gray to present the first item regarding a resolution um, to purchase vehicles um, on several items, several departments. So, Mr. Gray, good morning. Good morning, and thank you. The first item I have is for the purchase of Zoll medical cardiac monitors and automated CPR devices. The funds for this purchase were approved at the August 1st, 2017 Board of Commissioners meeting in the capital transfer. This is a sole source purchase from Zoll Medical in the amount of $89,519.56. Thank you. Um, you've heard the presentation of the resolution. Are there any questions or discussions from the board? Hearing none, all in favor? 
Oh, 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 no, excuse me, I'll open the floor for a motion. Thank you. Move Commission. to approve. <laughs> we got a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. We're moving to the next resolution as well from the Henry County Fire Department. Yes, ma'am. This is for the purchase of five new brawn ambulances. We request that the purchase be executed through a cooperative purchasing agreement through National Purchasing Partners Government Division for a total amount of one million seventy one thousand and fifty dollars. Okay, you've heard the presentation of this uh, resolution. Um, any discussions or questions? Commissioner Holmes? Uh, Rod, as we go through these, can you let us know which budget um, uh, items are coming Sherry out? just reminded me that, yes, sir. Okay. I just, and from the time I walked from there to here, I forgot to say that. Okay. Yes, sir, these are from the capital transfer that the board approved in August, and I apologize for that. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you, good observation. Any other questions or comments from the board? The floor is now open for a motion. We have a motion. Second. Have a second. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, that resolution for that has been approved as well. Moving to the next resolution. Yes, ma'am. This is for a, a sole source purchase of striker stretchers and stair chairs. Funds for this purchase were approved at the August 1st, 2017 Board of Commissioners meeting. Stryker has approved, has, has provided us a sole source quotation in the amount of $62,307.80 for the purchase of five refurbished Power Pro stretchers and five new stair chairs. Okay, you've heard the presentation. Are there any other questions or comments? The floor is now open for a motion. So moved. We have a motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The resolution is approved. Moving to the next resolution. Yes, ma'am. This is for the purchase of two Pierce stock Sabre pumper trucks for the Henry County Fire Department. Funds for this purchase were approved at the August 1st, 2017 Board of Commissioners meeting. The request is to purchase these vehicles through a cooperative purchasing agreement with the National Purchasing Partner Government um, contract in the amount of $870,010. Okay, you've heard the presentation. Are there any questions or comments from the board? The floor is now open for a motion. So moved. We got a motion. Second. There's a second. Any further questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? The resolution is approved as read. We now move into a um, EMA, our emergency management uh, group, to talk about a resolution as well. Yes, ma'am. This is a resolution of request to replace the emergency communication server room air conditioning system, which maintains all the center's critical infrastructure. This is an emergency request, but we've, we've located a solution through U.S. Communities, which is a cooperative purchasing agreement, to um, replace the air conditioning system in this, in this, in this area for $117,417.47. Funds for this purchase will come from the E911 reserve funds, which are available in the E911 budget. Thank you. You've heard the presentation of the resolution. Are there any questions or comments from the board? The floor is now open for a motion. Motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any further discussions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? The resolution is approved as read. We're now moving to our next resolution. Yes, ma'am. This is a request for the purchase of 10 2018 Ford Pursuit sedans, which are the Taurus model, and four 2018 S12, S120 transit wagon, 1215 passenger transit vehicles for the Sheriff's Department and Parks and Recreation Community Service Departments. Funds for these purchases were approved in the August 1st, 2017 Board of Commissioners meeting. The recommendation is to purchase these vehicles from Wade Ford, of Smyrna, Georgia, based on pricing provided by the Georgia State contract at a total cost of $351,720. All right, we've heard the presentation. Um, are there any questions or comments? Commissioner Barn? Uh, yes, uh, Rod, did we uh, get quotes from the uh, Legacy Forward? From who, sir? Legacy Forward? No, sir, we got the quote from the Georgia State contract. So that was the only bid we accepted. That was, the, we just used the contract pricing, yes, sir. Okay. Other questions? 
All right, you've heard the presentation of the resolution. The floor is now open for a motion. Motion to approve. We have a motion. Calling for a motion. We have a second. Any further questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. The resolution is approved. Thank you, Mr. Gray. We will now uh, move into our next item, which is a resolution um, regarding the county manager in the Henry County Police Department. Yes, ma'am. This is a request to purchase seven 2018 Chevrolet Tahoe Pursuit vehicles for the county manager, assistant county manager, chief of police, and police CID. The recommendation is to purchase these vehicles from Hardy Chevrolet of Dallas, Georgia, based on pricing provided by the Georgia State contract at a total cost of $234,654. You've heard the presentation of the resolution. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Commissioner Barham. Rod, I'll again ask you, did we uh, solicit bids from our local vendors? No, sir, we used the state contract price. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? <laughs> the difference between the state contracting versus um, local vendors? Yes, sir. The state contract was bid out by the state of Georgia, and the, the official code of the state of Georgia allows local governments to utilize state contract pricing without having to bid out the items themselves. Unless a local vendor were on the state contract, it would require us to do a sealed bid if the total purchase amount were over $50,000. If it were under $50,000, it would require us to solicit three quotations. So as far as the local vendor is concerned, it would provide them with an opportunity to bid, but it would not provide any guarantee that we could award the contract to them. Is the uh, state pricing lower than what we could get from our local vendors? Typically, yes. The only situation where I would say it would be 50-50 is if we purchased a truly large volume of vehicles at one time because what it allows us to do is utilize the state's buying capacity that we don't typically buy in the volume they do so their bidding would reflect the volume that they would typically utilize in their purchasing but there are anomalies certainly from time to time but historically it would be cheaper it would certainly be more efficient for us to utilize these also our, uh, our fleet director did some kind of some background checking on pricing for a base Tahoe, for a police Tahoe, for, or locally, it'll be a $47,000 on state contract, the base is 33136 Like a, a person directed by volume, we did look locally. They are very interested in our warranty work. They want to make sure they are that, and they are our provider for our warranty work for all vehicles. But the small quantity we buy compared to the state is one of the issues that they have about. Commissioner uh, Clemens. And I think the issue is is that we just need to make sure that we're providing a fair opportunity to all of our community to be able to participate in these bids. I don't think that we have an inclusive procurement process for this. It's easy just to say we go with a state vendor, but I would challenge you to work on that sure. um, because there are state laws in place that we could be able to allow more inclusiveness for our community as well. Commissioner Clemens, also, there are several local vendors that also have applied and achieved the state contract and the federal contract locally so we're excited about that opportunity also that they are competitive on a national level yeah but even if they're not state there's an opportunity for us to still be allow them to be more that we can be more friendly in henry county yes, to our community thank you. you yes ma'am yes county manager our purchasing director but we also have what we call a henry first initiative and rod if you could just kind of talk the board through that as well yes we have a henry first initiative which allows any purchases between zero and one hundred fifty thousand dollars it allows vendors to match the low quote and be awarded the quote, which is fairly progressive as far as local vendors are concerned. As far as inclusion, we make decisions that we feel are in the best interest of the county as far as the, the efficiency and the money. There's, there's certainly no effort to exclude anyone from this process. And I think that our, our code is, is certainly developed in a manner that everyone has an opportunity to bid on the work. So I'm comfortable with the way the code is written. If there's anything else you'd like to discuss, we can certainly do that, I, but I'm not, I'm not aware of any other issues. Other questions? Okay, Commissioner Clemens. Can you tell me the last time the code was updated? Yes, it was updated in December of 2015. Okay, and it included? Well, it was updated a couple of months ago for the state contract and the annual contract portion. What, was it updated to have language to for inclusiveness? Inclusiveness? For procurement processes for small businesses. For small businesses? Uh-huh. No, there was, okay. because you would have to 
determine what represents a small business and then you would have to certify them. So no, there's no language for small business, just local. Other questions or comments? Commissioner Barnes. Uh, yes, Rod. You know, this has been one of my pet peeves. I've sat and talked to you about this before, but uh, it was a time a while back that we actually was going to buy a tractor on state contract. And uh, we decided to uh, bid that tractor out. And we actually got a better deal right here locally than we were going to buy on state contract. Is that correct? In that particular instance, it is, yes, sir. Okay. And my other thing is, is I just won't allow our local vendors. We got Bellamy Strickland and the Ford Place less than a mile from here, and they're not even getting an opportunity. Now, I don't have any issue with issuing the state contract bid and say, this is what we're going to do. These are the specs. And if our local vendors can beat those, fine. If not, then, then I think we ought to go on the state contract. But I, in my past experience with the city of McDonald, a lot of times we did buy vehicles cheaper then we could get them on state contract because the, the local vendors may be offering some kind of reduced package or something. So that's just for my only comment. Right. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, and I'd like to make a comment in this regards as well. Um, I'm definitely open to us going back to look at every opportunity that we can to look at our policies to help small business in addition to what we're doing, um, especially if there are some, some opportunities that we haven't discussed recently. So I'd be more than happy to join at the table. But I do commend uh, what I did here today is that you are considering local businesses, that you're definitely getting the best price for the county, that you believe in most cases that um, the state has a better um, offer for our purchases, but at the same time, again, how can we better support the community that we live in? I think that's what I'm hearing from our board, and I'm definitely in support of that as well. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. The floor is now open for a motion. Motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. There's a second. Any further questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. The resolution is as approved. We're now moving to the next resolution on pertaining to fleet services. Yes, this is a request to purchase one Toro Dingo compact utility loader for the facility maintenance department. The request is to purchase this loader from Keystone Sales and Rental of Duluth, Georgia, utilizing pricing from the National Joint Powers Alliance cooperative purchasing contract in a total amount of $55,511. Okay. We've heard the presenta presentation of the resolution. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Okay, the floor is now open for a motion. I my motion to approve. We have a motion. Is there a second? Call in again. Is there a second? Okay. Well, that resolution has failed due to lack of a motion to second. Okay. So, County Attorney, at this time, do we have to have a motion to, to, to not pass it or just move on? Yes. Oh, okay, we did get a second. So, we have a motion. Let me, uh, again, we had a motion to approve the resolution. We now have a second. Are there any questions or comments regarding this resolution? Okay. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. The motion for the resolution is approved. We're now moving to the next resolution regarding SPLOST. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Romero asked me to identify that there is a budget amendment that is required to execute these purchases. And he wanted to ask at the board's pleasure, would you like to take his budget amendment before the purchasing items or just acknowledge that it's forthcoming after the purchasing items? Okay. Can you restate your question again? Would you like to consider the budget amendment that funds the projects I'm going to present to you before I present them or just understand that this forthcoming after you approve the purchases? Well, can we proceed with the presentation just so that we'll understand what you're speaking about and then yes, we can better answer I've, that question? Yes, what needs to happen is we need to reverse the order of those two items um, so that we can have the budget amendment before we take action on the actual request. So we just need to flip-flop those. So at this point, if the board would make a motion to amend the agenda to reverse the order of those items, I think that would help with the action that you all are going to take. What okay. Mr. Gray is saying is that you all may take action and then may not approve the budget amendment. So if the budget amendment doesn't get approved, then there's no need to approve the secondary action. 
Okay, so the floor is now open for a motion to um, actually um, modify the agenda. For the Chair Wood, I would like to make yes. a motion to move the item uh, under 8A yeah. to move it under um, right HA. Okay. HB. Okay, we have, have a motion um, to move the agenda item. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Any further discussions or questions? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, we will move that agenda item now. So if you will proceed as noted. Thank you, Chair and board uh, members. Uh, before I start, uh, as Rod is coming right after me, there's two bits that we've done is the resurfacing and also the surface treatment. And uh, just to clarify, on the resurfacing we had on the summary, we missed uh, some projects. I'm just going to put it up while I talk about the, the resolution. So in order to approve the next two resolutions, uh, we need a budget amendment. And uh, as part of the SPLUS 4, uh, uh, resurfacing, widening, and surface treatment, uh, District 3, SPLUS 4 resurfacing, is in need of additional $1.2 million uh, to cover the cost of the resurfacing, widening, and surface treatment. A budget amendment in the amount of $1.2 million uh, is needed to be transferred from the funds from District 3, stay at 81 at Florence McGarity Intersection Improvement Project. Uh, this project will be improved as part of the future Stay Route 81 widening project, which is in, currently in design. Um, so that's, that's the budget amendment, and I will take any questions. All right, you've heard the presentation. Um, is there, are there any questions or comments? Uh, 1.2 million. And that's coming out of uh, this SPLOS? SPLOS 4 District 3. And it goes towards his uh, District 3 projects. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? Okay. The floor is now open for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Okay. We have a first and a second. Are there any questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. The budget amendment is approved. All right. We'll now go back to um, the SPLOST item for the resolution for bid. To approve the bid award for cement stabilized base reclamation and resurfacing on various county roads. Five sealed bids were received for this project. CW Matthews Contracting provided the low bid of $4,465,503.08. As stated, there are approximately 30 roads, 16 miles slated for cement stabilized base reclamation. Ten roads are funded through SPLOS 4 funds, 19 roads are funded through local maintenance improvement grants, and one road is funded through SPLOS 4 funds and LMIG. The re recommendation is to approve the award to C.W. Matthews. Okay, you've heard the presentation. Are there any questions or comments from the board? The floor is now open for a motion. Move to approve. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Are there any further questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Resolution is approved. We're now moving to our final resolution regarding um, a SPLOS project as well. Yes, ma'am. And this is a resolution requesting a bid award for triple surface treatment for roads located in District 1 and District 2. One sealed bid was received and reviewed from Middle Georgia for an amount of $593,387.50. $2,046.94 will be funded through LMIG, $143,654.39 from District 1, and $205,656.17 will be funded through SPLOS 4, and the recommendation is to approve the award to Middle Georgia Paving for a right. total price of five ninety-three, three eighty-seven, and fifty cents. Very good. You've heard the presentation. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, the floor is now open for a motion. Motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, we will, um, we've already addressed um, item 8A um, as it was moved through the amended agenda. We're now moving to the budget department item and ask Ms. Angie Sorrow to present a resolution regarding a budget amendment as well. Good morning. Good morning. Before you have a, a budget amendment, a uh, resolution for a budget amendment to combine all of the police department's budgets, we want to decrease the CID budget in the amount of $3.2 million uh, decrease the special services for 718,000 and decrease the support services in the amount of 1.9 and then decrease the UPD in the amount of 12 million for we want to include all of these budgets into uh, police department administration this is for better accounting uh, for the department for instance, if you have a UPD officer that needs to work in CID for a short period of time, as of right now, we cannot do, we cannot allow that and moving the money back and forth. So with the new administration, we've decided to combine all these departments under one department. And will you uh, explain what CID and UPD is for those um, viewers? Yes, ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry. Added. CID is Criminal Investigation uh, Division and UPD is Uniform Patrol Division. Okay, go ahead. Very good. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, the floor is now open for a motion. Chair, a motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. There is a second. Any further discussions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. The resolution is, is approved. All right, we now will move into our public comment section of our agenda, and citizens are allowed to voice county-related concerns, opinions, and et cetera, that are not listed on the agenda during this time of the meeting. And all persons wishing to speak for public comments must sign in with the county clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. Um, you must complete the public comment speaker form, or you will not be recognized, and you will be able to address the board for five minutes, and we ask that you please do so in a very respectful manner. The county clerk will now read the names of the speakers who have signed up in the order that they were received. If you would like to come forward and restate your name for the record prior to commenting, again, we ask that you all uh, direct all of your comments to the board and respect each other's First Amendment rights and to also be respectful. The board will be able to make comment if they choose to after the speaker has finished. Thank you. Chair, we have six public comments today. Um, Carl Swenson, Lonnie Campbell, Simeon Nunnally, Larry Morey, Bill Walters, and Michelle Walters. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Carl Swinson from Stockbridge, and I'm happy to be here today. Uh, I think we had a, a rather inspiring prayer to start this off, and it's, it's falling in line with what I've I, really want to accomplish today. Um, we're all working to make Henry County a better place to live. We do have that in common. And sometimes we have our differences, and that's to be expected. Um, one of the things that has come to light lately is um, a, a faction in the county that <laughs> just uh, seems to want to uh, continue on a path of, uh, of divisiveness. And really, we we don't have that many people here that are anything other than good, God-fearing, conservative citizens in this county, okay? We love the county for what it is. It's a great place to live. But we've got a few that are just a little out there. Um, and if you'll pardon me, I have to inject a little levity here because I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't know how else to approach this, this subject anymore. Uh, we get a we, we get a lot of screaming and howling over stuff that's really not important to us. It is in the overall scheme of things. We've got much better, bigger uh, issues to deal with, and you know that. So I'm not trying to uh, berate or, or come down on anybody. I respect everybody's opinion. I do, and I think we all have to work together, and we can. But along those lines. We still have to understand that there are some, some differences out here. And one of those differences is it has to go along party lines. <laughs> and this is, this is true. It's funny, but it's true. We have uh, a movement across the country right now to <clears throat> get, rid of, get rid of monuments, 
<coughs> excuse me, monuments and, and all kinds of different uh, um, statues and whatnot. But it is a, a very small section of this country that, that's doing this, okay? And we have to keep that into perspective whenever we see this happening. I saw it happening on August 21st at the McDonough Square as the young Democrats were trying to talk about removing a statue again. Um, the operative word there was young Democrats. And, <laughs> you know, it is our history, whether you like it or not. And those that came before that made this county what it is saw fit to put these in, the, in their place. And we really shouldn't be even addressing this issue much anymore because it's a, it's a joke, a sad joke, but a joke nonetheless. We've got much bigger fish to fry here. And I think it's time for us to just come together and work on what we have to accomplish to make this county what we envisioned it to be, a great place to live, a great place to bring up a family. And I think that uh, if we can get past the divisive nature of the, uh, of the party politics, I think we can get these things done because we are all working to make things better here in this county. I know I am, the people that I work with are, and I know you are. So I just want to say that I thank you for the job that you're doing, and I continue to work to make this a better county. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please come forward and state your name and address, please. My name is Lonnie Campbell. I'm from Stockbridge. I'm here today to ask you to focus on the business of the Henry County Board of Commissioners and to not allow the demands of a political party or entity to steer this board away from accomplishment of what really needs to be done here. The monument in the McDonough Town Square has never been an issue before now. And since this monument is protected by state law, it shouldn't be an issue now. Title 50, Article 3, Chapter 1 of the Official Code of Georgia prohibits any action to removing this monument by anyone to include public entities such as the Board of Commissioners. So this is not a question. It can't be done. It shouldn't be done. It's history. I stand here and I argue the finer points of history, but the truth is none of us were there. None of us know what the motives of the different individuals had. None of us know the individuals in the area of our country's history behaved or acted. We can only pursue, pursue to know based on the accounts that have been passed down to us. But the one thing we do know and need to remember is it was a dark time in our history for everyone. And this community was divided and destroyed because of it. We should not let that mistake be repeated because of a 107 year old block of stone that stands as nothing more than a remembrance of people who died for the love of this community. Misguided they may have been, but it's, it is also noted in this history that their homes were invaded and their properties were destroyed. If the federal government sent a battalion to march on Henry County today to burn our homes and government buildings and to force the community into submission, there's not one person in this room that wouldn't take up arms to protect our homes and our families, regardless of the government reasons for taking such actions. The Constitution was written and designed to give the private citizens the right to repeal oppressive government, and it is an American tradition to react as such. The monument was meant to honor that aspect of the Civil War. And I want to say to the citizens that are here today that while you have been bickering among, about flags and statues, this board has risen your property taxes and your water mi mileage rates. How important is that statue going to be when your water gets shut off because you cannot pay the bill because your mortgage payments have gone up to cover the escrow on your property taxes? 
if you want to unite in this county, then unify to make sure that your politicians are working for you and not for themselves. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Simeon Nunley, I stay in uh, 134 Wilson Court, Stockbridge, Georgia. So the fight about removing the Confederate statues, is, it, it's not about, uh, it's, it's all about honoring our soldiers who have fallen as uh, we are presently being the United States of America. The statues before you was actually erected from when we had a nation that was divided, right? I myself as an Army veteran, I feel like due to the fact that we lose 22 veterans a day due to suicide and due to all kinds of unseen scars, I would like to see us do more for our veteran community, more for our population. We have veterans amongst us. David Gill is a veteran. I'm myself a veteran. Commissioner Brent Plintz is a veteran. And we can do so much more for our veteran community. Now, I want to honor us as being one nation under God in the visible, not when we was a divided country fighting against each other, not when we was fighting for slaves against the South, a person out in the North. We have a person that stood before us today with a tie of a Marine division that raised the American flag in Japan after the war was set. Let's not honor those veterans who fought to keep us together, not fought to keep us divided as a group, as a nation. So. Our fight is to honor veterans. So I propose to the Board of Commissioners, can we erect a statue of Thomas, of Thomas McDonald, who is a United States Navy officer who the city is named after? People don't even know who he is. He actually basically won the War of 1812, and he fought to keep us together and unified. So let's erect a statue of a Navy officer, a great Navy officer, in the city in which it was named for. I'm not trying to say let's tear down the statues and break it. I'm not trying to start mass chaos and anarchy. Well, I am the president of the Young Dems, and this is not even a, a, a political thing. It's let's honor our soldiers. Let's honor the people who fought to keep us together, who fought to keep us united. That's it. Thank you. The next individual. Larry Mori, Ethics and Government. <clears throat> you know, a few weeks ago, I questioned y'all's is allowing trucks to be parked on 81 just before it runs out on the west end of the county. Nobody listened, and uh, you got a sweet mess over there now. And then if you come over here on 155, about three months ago, we talked about that little intersection right there where y'all where built that massive truck company the first one on the right right behind the little kangaroo oil and now you've let it become a truck stop and so now you've created a total not just a a limited it's a total quagmire right there in that intersection you got an extremely busy QT on one side uh, industrial park with hundreds of employees to the left you got the kangaroo to the right and the massive truck terminal behind it, and that kangaroo is, go out there this morning. You need to go look. It is totally, in, totally encompassed in trucks. They can't get in, they can't get in, out, they can't turn around, it's just got a 155 in a, in a mess. I hope you're satisfied, because you won't listen. You know, a few months ago I heard Mr. Gill come in here and talk about how great education was in Henry County. Chairman, you did too. I want to read you something. 65% of the schools in Henry County are considered to be underperforming or actually failing. 65%. Administrators are being held responsible but not high-ranking administrators and not the Board of Education. Five lower level managers, principals, are being held responsible. They fired them. Mr. Bowler, he took a retirement, good paycheck, and he takes off. In 1988, a banker told me something in Mitchell County. He says, I want it to be like it was in 1953. 
I said, Judd, it can't be like that. If you graduate, you're good students, and they leave going getting jobs at Atlanta because of truck traffic and all that here. And all of those that can't graduate stay here. After a while, you got a quagmire of problems. Nevada done something about theirs. They took the the lower half of their students, and they create what they call a school choice. And it is now accepted in Washington, D.C., and is a model for the nation. You see, unions and boards of education have so allowed so much cancer into the administration of our school system, it's no longer works. And if we don't do something, and you say you can't do anything, sure you can. When they won't splash to spend more, spend more money, you can help defeat it. You can get off of that perch up there and talk about what's true in the, in the Board of Education in this county. You see students not reading at his or her grade level by the end of the third grade is four times will not more likely not to graduate from high school, six times less likely for students from low-income families. Take that, add it to the 209 study by researchers at Northwestern University that found that high school dropouts are 63 times more likely to be incarcerated. Now here I'm going to give you some numbers that's really crazy. And I've shared these with the NAACP, and anybody wants a copy of them, here they are. Only 8% of our students will graduate with an associate's degree or higher, minority students. 12% Hispanic and 14% white. If that's not a shame on us, Outlook, something's wrong with you, seriously. Some say that third or fourth grade, you can tell what that student's going to be. We got a, stu a school on Walker Drive. Thank I can you, tell Mr. you Murray. by the fourth grade. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Your time is ended. If he's going to be in prison or not. We'll now ask our next person to please come forward. <laughs> Keep sticking your head. Mr. Moore, you're out of order. Bill Walters, Henry County. Just like to say, I appreciate you letting me speak, and uh, I, I hope that you care about what your people are telling you. That monument, yeah, it's about that. Why is it an offense? It hasn't climbed down and smacked anybody in the face. It hasn't stuck a finger up at anybody, but it does represent something, doesn't it? And to remove it would be to make a whole bunch of people in your communities very angry with you. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to even go there? Two questions. First one, what's the original purpose that our community put that statue there? What is it? Have you looked it up? Do you, do you care? I mean, we're talking to you right now. Do you, do you care? Some of you don't care. Some of you don't. You're looking around and just doing whatever you want to do. I got to tell you, though, the Bible teaches us a lot of things about statues and monuments. It tells us not to bow down to them and worship them. And that's not what this is about. And by the way, if you see someone doing that, tell them they're breaking the second commandment, okay? The reason that statue and monument is there, it's a memorial. It's a witness to our community of the people that lived here before you and I who gave their lives or died in battle. That's it. Doesn't mean anything else. Why do you want to take it away? Why do you want to let people poison your mind into changing what is our history? Doesn't make sense to me. Other places in the scripture, Jacob set up a pillar whenever God talked to him. Some of them places became cities. Doesn't matter to you, I guess. Other places, Jacob set up a monument to Rachel's grave. Okay, it's, it was a pillar. It represented a witness of death. So does that guy standing there in the middle of the square. He is a witness of death. It's also a reminder to us not to go against our authorities, right? Not to fight against those that are in charge that make the laws. 
but rather to plead with y'all, leave things, leave them as they are. Let, and, and look, I got something to show you, it's not a big deal, I guess, but I really hope that you take into consideration. I don't think you're really paying attention. Some things don't matter, some things do. I mean, look, in yellow it says, these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. What was the big deal there? It was the River Jordan stood up on its end to let the children of Israel cross across it on dry land. Look at the next couple of verses with me, if you will, or, or look at your, your hands or whatever you're doing over there. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, when your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, what mean these stones? Tell them what happened. When, when kids go through that square, educate them on that statue. Why is it there? Well, there's history here, right in our county, right in our square, right in our community. People that used to live here don't live here anymore and died in battle. Pretty important. And so, bottom line, what I'm trying to say, don't remove that witness to our past. Don't remove a memorial. It's there so that we never forget. And it's to honor the fallen of your community, your districts, people that live. Some of y'all, I got it, my second question I never got to. Okay, the first question, what's the original purpose that our community put that statue there? Okay, my second question is what is the original purpose that our community elected you to sit in that chair right now? Is it to do your own thing? Is change things that people don't want changed? Because look, okay, we need to make sure that our purposes are the same. The community that you serve, that we pay your salary, as well as your own motives for what you're doing. Enact laws, but do that to, to uh, honor uh, your community, your district. We need to make sure that our purposes are the same because if they're not, okay, we're gonna vote again sometime. And I'm not trying to lay this on the line as just being mean to you, it's not about that. It's in all honesty, we don't want these things removed. Listen to your people in your districts. Make decisions that preserve the history of your district. Be proud of the history of your district, whatever it is that you serve, okay? Remember the past and be an honest witness like these monuments are, honest witnesses of what happened. That's all it is. And if you remove them, I think that some of you won't be sitting there. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I think we have one final person. Michelle Walters, Henry County. That's my husband. I'm quite proud of what he had to say. I've been watching things, um, Confederate, there are fight against Confederates, uh, statues, flags, memorials for two years now. And first thing I noticed was that they canceled the Dukes of Hazard because the car's name was General Lee. That's really stupid, it was a great, wholesome show. I'm sure many people in this room have enjoyed that show. Now I see that in Memphis, Tennessee, a theater that has been running every summer for 34 years, Gone with the Wind. And now they've decided that they won't do that anymore because that movie is racist movie wasn't racist, it was a love story set during the Civil War. This has gotten really out of hand. Now I can tell you what will happen, what I think will happen if that statue in the square, if that memorial to the Confederate dead is removed, I see it becoming a blight. I see it destroying the businesses around the square, the restaurants, the, the antique stores, every business there. We won't even need a welcome center anymore because there's nothing to show anyone. We've already lost Nash Battle Farm Field, Battlefield, that we're still fighting for it. And you want to put these museum or these monuments in museums, but you're taking away the museums. Then they say, put it in a cemetery. Now I see them literally toppling down the, the, the cemeteries themselves being desecrated. You wouldn't want any of your family members' graves desecrated. None of them. I wouldn't want it for, to my family. I don't want it to anyone's family. Now, it has gotten so ridiculous that this is what I fear. 
because I do have a dog named Dixie. This is how stupid it has gotten. And I agree with Mr. Nunnally. Let's put up more monuals or monuments, not less. We don't take down monuments and memorials. I say, let's put up more and let's lift up more people in history, good or bad. It is history and history is not always pretty. War is never pretty and it should not be romanticized. But that's not what that statue out there is for. It is there to simply go for a remembrance for those of us who have our Confederate dead here and we don't know where they're buried. If we want to put some time into constructing some, some good con Confederate history, why don't we start taking care of some of the cemeteries around here? There's a Weem Cemetery, there's 184 slaves buried there and it's desecrated. Let's put our energies into all of us coming together and fixing that place up so that we can show that we cared about their lives too. Not just the, full, the soldiers that fought, but everybody that lived here during those times. This is getting out of hand. I even read this morning that if you listen to a hard metal rock and roll music, which I do, you might be a neo-Nazi. No, I'm not. I have Jewish ancestry in me. This is getting far out of hand. Too many people are being offended and they're going by feelings. And when you go by your feelings, all you're saying is you're not strong enough to show and control your own emotions in a respectful and manner that will move people forward. That's all I really have to say. Thank you for your time, and I, I really hope you all take everything that was said here in consideration, because it's only a handful of people that want these mo monuments removed. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes uh, We have one more. No, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Well, this concludes our uh, public comment section, and we thank you all for your comments. We'll now move into the approval of minutes for the August 15th regular Board of Commissioners meeting, the August 18th called Board of Commissioners meeting um, regarding the NS, NCSC presentation, um, the August 22nd um, called Board of Commissioners meeting regarding capital funding, hotel motel tax, Henry County Fire, De Police, uh, Fire Department ambulance transport rates. Are there any revisions or comments regarding the, the minutes? If not, the floor is open for a motion. Move to approve. We have a motion. Second. There's a second. Any further discussion or comments or revisions? All in favor? Any opposed? We're now moving to um, comments from the chair and board of commissioners. Is there anyone that likes to make any statements at this time or comments? Okay. We're now moving to our county manager comments. Any comments from the county manager? Yes, ma'am, just a brief comment. I'm sure by now everyone has heard um, that Henry County did have a tiger this morning that was on the loose um, at the intersection of Jodico and I-75. Um, I do want to make the board aware and the public aware um, that due to the safety and the concerns that arose from the aggressiveness of the tiger, our police department did have to make a decision to take the tiger down via gunfire. Um, obviously where the tiger was located, it was in a highly densely populated area of the county and given the hour that the tiger was running loose, we were certainly concerned about the students that were going to be headed to schools and the bus routes in the location. Um, I will tell you that our police department and our animal control office is working diligently to try to identify who the tiger belongs to, um, but we have submitted a media release for those that want more information. But again, if anyone knows anything about the tiger, we do ask that you do contact the Henry County Police Department. So I just wanted to make you all aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other comments from the county manager? Thank you. Okay. Um, regarding upcoming meetings and events, on September the 19th, we will have a regular Board of Commissioners meeting at 6.30 p.m. And then on September the 20th at 6.30 p.m. is a call meeting to receive public comments regarding the 2040 update of the Henry County City's Joint Comprehensive Plan. Um, we'll now ask, is there any um, items for the executive session? Um, 
um, we're asked of that from our county attorney? No, there's nothing for executive session today. Okay, having none, we now will um, have a, um, a motion for adjournment. So moved. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. There's a second. Any other items or discussions? All in favor? Thank you. All opposed. We consider ourselves adjourned. Thank you.